Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the two or more player game, Zombie Dice, designed by Steve Jackson and published by Steve Jackson Games, who helped sponsor this video. A zombie's life isn't easy. All you want are brains, and nobody wants to give them to you, and they get really upset when you try to take them. But that's your job here. Get a bunch of brains before the other zombies beat you to them. I've got the deluxe version of Zombie Dice here, and we'll use this in the video, but you can also pick up regular Zombie Dice, which has slightly different components that we'll go over at the end of the video so you can compare. But that said, they both have the same rules. So join me at the table, and let's learn how to play. To set up, give each player one of these scoreboards. In this video, we'll assume we have two players, returning the rest to the box. Now add all of the dice to the included bag and pass this, along with the dry erase marker, to the person who won the last game. If this is your very first game, then the rules say to pick the person who can say brains with the most feeling. So it probably won't be me. Or you can just pick someone randomly. And that's the setup. Now the deluxe version comes with six of these scoreboards, but you really can play with as many people as you like. Any extra players just need to have their own way to track their points using maybe their phone or a pen and paper. Anything like that would be fine. In Zombie Dice, you and the other players are zombies trying to collect brains and avoid the very mean humans who are trying to blow you away with their shotguns. The player who has the most brains when the game ends will win. The game is played over a series of turns, taking in clockwise order around and around the table, starting with the person holding the bag of dice. On a turn, you draw three random dice from the bag and roll them, and each die represents a human, and there are three possible colors. Green dice are weak humans, yellow are tougher, and red are the strongest. Now we'll talk about the differences between them in more detail later, but for now it's enough to know that each has sides made up of symbols representing brains, shotguns, and footprints. Rolling a brain means you ate your victim's brain, which is good, and you set any brains you rolled to your left. If you rolled a shotgun, it means your victim fought back and you didn't get their brain. Set any shotguns rolled to your right. Footprints mean your victim escaped. This isn't good, but at least they didn't shoot you with a shotgun. Any footprints rolled are kept directly in front of you in the center. After rolling the dice and sorting them, you check to see how many of the shotgun symbols you have. If there's three of them in front of you, you're severely wounded. Your turn immediately ends and you'll score no points this turn. You then put all the dice back in the bag and pass it along with the marker to the next person in clockwise order. However, if you have less than three of these shotgun symbols like we have here, you now get to make a choice. Stop and score or continue rolling. If you decide to stop, count how many brains you set on the left and then cross out that number of brains on your scoreboard. After stopping and scoring, your turn ends and you would put all of the dice back into the bag, passing the bag and the marker to the next player in clockwise order, and then they would take their turn. But let's assume you both didn't have three shotguns and didn't decide to stop and score. In that case, you draw new random dice from the bag so that the number of dice drawn plus the number of footprints you already have is three. In this case, I have one footprint, so I need to draw two more dice. You then gather those dice together and roll them, but never pick up the brains or shotguns from previous rolls. Those stay where they are. So in other words, anytime you roll, you will always roll three dice, and they must include any of the footprints you had just previously rolled. After a new roll, you resolve it the same way as any other. Any brains you rolled are set to your left, any shotguns are set to the right, and any footprints are just left in the center. Now again, after this roll, you can stop and just score the brains you have, or roll again. The catch is that each time you roll, yes, you might get more brains, but you also might get more shotguns. And if you ever have three shotgun symbols, your turn just ends and you score none of the brains that you've rolled so far this turn. If you ever roll all footprints and then decide to roll again, you won't draw any new dice from the bag because the number of dice you have to re-roll is already at three. I should mention, as soon as you've drawn dice from the bag, well, now you must roll again. You can't look at the dice and then decide, no, 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 wait a second, I, I don't wanna roll anymore and then put them back. Once you've taken dice out, you've committed to rolling. With that understood though, let's see what makes each of the dice different. 
I said green dice are the weakest humans, and that's because they have three sides with brains and only one side that is a shotgun. Yellow is tougher because it has two brain sides, but also two shotgun sides. And red is the worst because it has only one brain and three shotgun sides. There are 13 dice in total, and this is how many of each color there are. So when you're deciding if you should roll again on your turn, you'll want to consider what types of dice you have already out and what might be left in the bag. To explain this next rule, I'm giving you an exposed view of inside the bag, but just keep in mind when you're playing, you always have to draw dice out randomly. However, if you ever want to roll again on your turn, and there are fewer than three dice in the bag, First, make a note of how many brains you've currently rolled this turn. I'll just write that number here on this zombie's head. And then you put all of those brains back in the bag and continue drawing as normal. Just keep in mind, any shotguns you have out of the bag stay here. You don't put those back in. As you keep going, any new brains you roll, you'll add to your previous total. And of course, shotguns you add as well. So in a case like this, I now have three shotguns, and I not only lose these two brains, but also these nine as well. So that's how a turn works. You roll three dice, sort them, and then as long as you don't have three shotguns, you can stop and score the brains you have, or roll again. And you'll continue like this until you either bust it by having three shotguns, or you've just decided to stop and score the brains you have. Either way, when a player's turn is over, they put all of the dice that they've rolled back into the bag and then pass it with the pen to the next player in clockwise order. You'll keep taking turns like this until someone has at least 13 brains marked off on their scoreboard. You then keep playing until everyone has had an even number of turns. In other words, if I was the player who had started the game and I'm the first to get to or go past 13 brains on my turn, then each other player gets one more turn so they'll have had as many turns as me and then the game would end. If instead, just as another example, the last player in the turn order is the player who first gets to 13 brains or more, then the game just ends on their turn since at that point everyone will have already have had an even number of turns. Also, if you end up eating so many brains that you score more than 16 during the game, just make a note of how many you ate in total as that will be your final score. And with the game over, the player who now has the most brains wins. If there's a tie, the tied players, and just those players, play as many equal extra turns as necessary to break the tie. And with that understood, let me now show you what comes in the regular version of the zombie dice game. Instead of a bag, you get a cup, and the dice are solid colors rather than translucent. You also don't get scoreboards or a marker, so players just record their scores in some other way. Both these versions of the game are played the exact same way, so the rules I've taught you here will cover you for both. And if you want more variety, there are expansions you can pick up that give you new dice and special rules. But otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play zombie dice. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at Board Game Geek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notification anytime we post a new video. And if you'd like to support us directly, you can join our Patreon team, which I'll have linked below. But until next time, thanks for watching.